what a what a celebration of stronzos, if I can quote the movie a little bit. Uh, this everybody is a stronzo in this one, aren't they? Uh, yep. I'll, I'll start with, uh, I'm a big fan of the Peter Ustinov quote, which is, comedy is a funny way of being serious. And as ridiculous as all you people are in this, uh, uh, your circumstances are very real to you. Um, you're silly people, but you're invested in your own little reality uh, or delusion. But uh, that's what really works uh, uh, in it for me. Uh, and I just enjoy the ridiculousness that all you people uh, uh, find yourselves in. Uh so I guess uh, um, my first question would be, um, uh, the inspiration is obvious, is clear, but could you tell the audience a little about uh, uh, what fermented a bunch of uh, LA people to do a, 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 such a tribute to uh, uh, you know, the Italian new wave to Fellini and all that? Uh, what, what got this going? Well, we, we did, I'm kind of come up with the characters. We wanted to uh, make a movie and we're huge fans of Fellini. And um, all of all of the great like Italians, Antonioni, uh, Bertolucci, and so we thought like, what would be fitting in Hollywood and in the hills? And we thought, well, you know, it's it's definitely got to be you know uh, 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 eight and a half because it's about filmmaking and the, and La Dolce Vita as well, which is the scathing sort of um, look at sort of the industry and the industry of fame. So uh, that's that's kind of where it happened. Then we're also fans of Godard and. And so like the idea of uh, shooting in the car um, in a convertible, I mean, that's, that's, that was kind of the other inspiration, but we just sure. love it. It was a nice way, the way you melded the old and the new and, and, and it worked quite well. Um, it, it didn't break the reality of it, you know, especially with the vintage car scene out your way, you know? Yes. Yeah. yeah, we got really lucky with the figurine, the uh, Christ the Redeemer figurine we were looking for a small statue that would be light enough that a drone could fly it, fly with it. And I, I came across Christ the Redeemer with a stormtrooper, Star Wars stormtrooper head on it. And I thought that's perfect. A little kid would have that. It's it's Hollywood. It's perfect. But yes. pure luck, though. Uh, the, the driving uh, scene was fantastic. I feel bad for your, your two leads here. I imagine most of the time you were just uh, reacting to the camera and the, uh, the, the, the camera operator rather than to each other, right? Do you feel bad for this lead? He wasn't driving. <laughs> I was the one who was driving. And it was a nightmare. But I had to act. I had to act. <laughs> <laughs> so did I, or at least I tried to. But um, we didn't really have the opportunity to do much rehearsal. So we're driving through the hills and, you know, just driving different routes. And this is one of them. Everything was in this area. And there were cars that were behind us and they were honking at us. And, you know, as much as you would think that people in L.A., especially in the Hollywood Hills, love filmmaking, I think they also get annoyed as well. So, um, yes, the driving was a little bit of a nightmare. I can laugh about it now, but at the time, um, it, it, it wasn't fun with uh, the sun beating on my head and my um, wonderful director yelling at me. And um, all, all first world <laughs> problems. Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. It was, yeah. And the bumpy road, though, and the, the bumpy road really added to, I think, the performance. Well, I think so. My, my performance, anyway. When when Natalie slapped me, um, that was a, that was the first take, and we just hit this bump, and she full on, she didn't pull back because we hit a bump. And she just hauled off and slapped me. That was and real. Yeah. That was yeah. real. And knocked might, my glasses off. You might so, as well get it over with, because if you half ass the slap, you have to do it five more times, right? Exactly. She offered to do retakes. She still <laughs> offers to do retakes. I mean, just five minutes ago, she offered to do a retake. I kind of, I, I kind of want to. I really yeah, kind of want to. Yeah. She's aching too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's you like do seem. You do seem slappable, Garth, I, I must say. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But uh, I sympathize yeah. with you, Natalie. I, I did a, a similar scene uh, about a year ago where I'm driving and I have to look back at my prisoner at just the precise moment. And, you know, you do have to look at the road a little bit, don't you? Yes, you do. You have to look at the road just a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And it was a clutch. It's a clutch. Oh, speed, yeah. So yeah. there's that too. It was a on, a, on hills. So, yeah. yeah. Was but that. Yeah, you try to just leave it in gear and just uh, put put along. Uh, um, keep it nice uh, and no, it was no, real. real. No, driving. it was real because if I left it in a, a certain gear, my director would let me know that I was not in the right gear. So I really did have to focus on the driving. Oh boy, and you know, the I, 
the, the speed of the of the car that's had true. to match yeah, as well. That's true, yeah. So to cut together, um, she had to maintain a constant speed. Oh boy, yeah. No, it makes sense. Makes sense. Uh, I'm going to break a, a winning streak we had here. We've gone through the whole festival today without mentioning the doggone lockdown slash virus. But I have to ask, uh, were you able to take advantage of it and have the roads to yourself relatively um, while shooting? Um, the, well, we shot just before. We've been editing. Um, so we shot just before lockdown. So we oh, shot okay. and, and the hills during the during the week tend to be, you know, fairly quiet anyway uh, unless you want to shoot there yeah then these, for these, some reason there's tons of cars yeah these streets that we're on now it's it's basically um residential area in the hills uh-huh i see i see yeah uh, uh yeah that's too bad you couldn't wait just a little longer and, and have the roads all to yourself right yeah mm -hmm. yeah would have been easier for me yeah <laughs> i'll bet i'll bet uh uh um uh, what was I going to ask? Oh, uh, uh, you, David, as the annoying guy, you are actually uh, Cindy, my co The annoying guy. <laughs> I love the annoying guy. That's me, Cindy. Loves the annoying I, guy. I'm sorry, Dominator Jack, but I do. I love you. Hello. You're so awesome. I'm like, you have to ask annoying man. Sorry. Just going to go back to her. <laughs> She's been doing a, a few too many interviews today. So. That's, fine. <laughs> That's a long day for you guys. Yeah. yeah. Yes, it is. But uh, uh, did you just have to get your hat in the ring, or uh, 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 what was the uh, the challenge of being that annoying? It was it was a reluctant get in the film kind of thing. It was Garth's idea. We we're trying to cast somebody that we know that wasn't available, and Garth said, "Why don't you just do it?" And I'm not an actor; don't pretend to be. But um, uh, yeah, I just went as far as I could with it. I think maybe too far. I don't know. He said, "He said, um, uh, uh, let's just write it up." We thought, "No, no, we, we've got to have it because it's the opening." And and no, it was reluctant. He did not want to do it at all. No. Oh well, so you know, it's funny how often that works out for the best. The first, you know, uh, the lack of desperation or urgency to nail the role um, usually means you're going to do a better, a, sl a better job than uh, the person who has to has to have it. You know. Yeah. It and you know what's so funny is like um, we we shot right before that film came out, the John Travolta film, where he wore those like Tommy Bahama crazy shirts, where he was a stalker, uh -huh. a celebrity. And before we even saw any of that, I was looking through Dave's closet, you know, looking for wardrobe and what he should wear for this. So I'm like, oh, dude, you have to wear this. And it just turned out to be sort of the same stocky. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hollywood stuff. nut job. Exactly. Hollywood nut job. So, yeah, I think we're on the same page. So uh, uh, did you all pitch in uh, uh, for the costuming or uh, anybody uh, take the mantle for that? Because uh, that was a sensational part of it as well. The costumes really helped bring these people to life as well. Garth and I shopped together. Yeah, they, yeah. they shopped for Garth's uh, suit. And I, yeah, mine just came out of my closet. It's a pity the film's in black and white because the shirt is really colorful. It's, oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, uh, yeah. It, sometimes film gives you an excuse to buy things you normally wouldn't, right? But, uh, so much. Sorry. 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 Mail, 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 mail delivery. Mail delivery. Oh, uh, uh, I have a, a message from my better half here. Uh, um, Natalie, did you ever do PR? Because it, you are spot on. Oh. You know what? Actually, no, until recently. <laughs> um, um, yeah, I'm just starting to do PR with my uh, full-time job. I work for a nonprofit, but yeah, no, normally no. Thank you. Okay. I well, appreciate that. She was spot on. Coming from uh, somebody in the industry as well, uh, yeah, you're, you're spot on, and uh, it sounds like you'll do just fine. Um, I have another question. <laughs> Please do. Actually, um, what I wanted to ask about was um, the actual filming itself. You know how you've got that scene where you're going round and round and you're doing all the, the driving and such. Um, just from a camera perspective, because not everybody who watches these has filmmaker background per se. So talk to me a bit about the process as it relates to the winding and how to make that effect look like it, because you did marvelously as to the whole cinematography. Yeah, the matching up as well. It's just a, um yeah i mean it was we since we just kept going up and down the same road uh we weren't actually that concerned about background we were more concerned about 
speed, just making sure that we're going at constant speed. And then uh, when we shot up at the Hollywood sign, we shot towards sunset and it was just a beautiful time to shoot. And um, the flare on the little girl uh, through her veil, that was all, uh, you know, we, we ran into that. We didn't set it up. And, you know, we, we knew what we were getting was great, but uh, there wasn't really any planning. It was really a kind of like a little, we were doing it kind of like an exercise, this movie. But you guys, I'm sorry, but you guys planned exactly what time you wanted to get up to that hill and shoot. So oh, it sure. wasn't by yeah, accident. Yeah, yeah. You knew that you wanted that particular really, really golden, special Hollywood light. Yeah. So that was not by accident. No, yeah. but the, the, the flares were really yeah, by yeah, accident. Yeah. Yeah. And, and one, one thing about the background as well is, is you know, we were hoping for, because, because the difference in light and shade, as well as the, the difference in the background, goes into um, uh, Obuda Suf, the Godard, uh, because the background changes. Back and forth, so the jump cuts in the background um, as uh, Jean-Paul Belmondo and Gene Seberg are talking. The background changes in jump cuts, so we kind of wanted that, yeah, you know, to, to get the to get the effect of you know sixties guitar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it, it leads uh, that and the and the uh, uh, you know the sinking it it makes it a little more discombobulating, like the circumstances. Uh, I don't know if that's uh, exactly right, but uh, that that's the effect it had on me. You know, it makes it a little more jarring. Oh yes, yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's great. Yeah. I can also add that when I was judging the film, one of the things that I noticed at least, and this is a compliment, by the way, sometimes some of the best performances come when every single actor in the group or character in this case is annoying. All of you are just kind of the epitome of up and above. You know what I mean? There's the base character and you just kind of bring it to the next level. Was that intentional or did that just kind of formulate while you were figuring out your own character? So I kind of missed because oh, of the she was, she was asking that all of our characters are like really over the top. And did you, did, did he write them that way or did we fall into them that way? And it's a little bit of both, I think. Um, but Garth, Garth tends to write characters who are extremely on the fringe of society. And- <laughs> <laughs> Really? Do, I thought yeah. it was a realist. Oh and, my God. Even uh, though like, like he plays an actor and, and she's an agent, they're still, their their personalities are very fringe. They're very like, kind of like loners in a way and very bitter. Everybody in this thing is bitter, bitter. but that's how he writes. He does. He writes Read uh, about what you know. Yeah, beautiful, <laughs> bitter, brilliant characters. How long have you all been in uh, La La Land? Uh, I think we missed that audio there. I say, how long have you all been in LA? Oh, uh, shoot, I've been here most of my life now. Uh, am I framing that right? Yeah, I guess so. Can't tell. Yeah. yeah, I got it. Catch, yeah, catch the I better moved, side. Yeah, I moved here after college uh, a couple of years ago. <laughs> <laughs> and Garth, I, I, I've read uh, your story. That is uh, one fascinating tale of how you got to town. Oh, from uh, the Arctic? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Uh, by uh, Bicicletta, right? Sorry? Uh, bicycle. You, is that true? You rode your bicycle? Uh... Yes, not from the Arctic, because it's the Arctic and there yes. are no roads. But um, from uh, Vancouver, British Columbia, down um, down the highway, all the way down to uh, Los Angeles. When I was, uh, I think I was 18 at the time. And so I've been here pretty much ever since. So that was, what, three years ago? Three years ago. Three years ago. <laughs> Well, I, I'm a fan of the expression, they, uh, they fell right off the turnip truck, but you certainly broke that mold. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I, I got my bicycle and it, had, it was laden with um, my saddlebags, my tent and, and my um, sleeping bag. And I got onto the I-5 in Washington State because I'd never seen a freeway before, an interstate before. And, and it said no motorized vehicles or no non-motorized vehicles. So, I went, so it's a road. That can't be right. So I got onto the prime of my bike. Absolutely unbelievable. Oh, highway. Whoa, that's nice. Okay. Folks, let me ask you. That's too close. No, I just yeah. want to hear. Yeah. So, uh, uh, it, lens. in conclusion, is Hollywood really the land of dreams or a ridiculous place for silly people, would you say? Both. Both. 
the land of dreams for ridiculous and silly people. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Oh, you absolutely. combine the two. I like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. Because people are ridiculous and silly. And it is. Yeah. Dreams I mean, you, come you, true. You came up with it. It's yeah, it's exactly what Hollywood is. I love it. I absolutely love it. Uh, the voices now. Um, uh, what, how was that? Um, uh, the search for that? Did you uh, just uh, put out casting on the voiceover sites and all that? Uh, uh, well, actually, for uh, for Maggie and for um, uh, for uh, for Dave's character, I had uh, two former students from uh, England um, who were who who were in um, Ravensbourne when I was teaching there. Um, uh, film production, and I asked if they would do it, and they did it. They did it remotely, um, and then uh, for for my voice, we did do we did do uh, extra or uh, voice casting. Yeah, we uh, we placed an ad on Craigslist and got a great. We got a lot of responses, a lot of really good responses. So uh, we were happy with that. And that was during the pandemic. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The, the recording of the. Yeah. Yeah. That was. That was yeah, all remote. All yeah. Was, yeah. All of it was during the pandemic. Craigslist, that's a, a, an often overlooked uh, resource, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, out here it's used yeah. quite a bit for independent films. Yeah. Oh, gosh. I'll give, give, it, give, I'll give it a whirl. Hey, how, how is the film, uh, uh, how is it uh, done in the, the festival route and all that? Because um, it really is a unique product. Um, um, it's, I, uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, we, we won an award with, on uh, the Liberty, Films, Liberty Film Festival. We won um, Best American Short. Uh, we're screening in Portland, a Shorts Fest there, and Studio we're, City. we're screening out here on a, on a big screen with an audience uh, in Studio City in November, and I'm really, really looking forward to that. And we're finalists in Vancouver Independent Film Festival and uh, Toronto, Toronto. Mm -hmm. Toronto Independent Film Festival. But you're, not gonna, but you're not going to ride your bike to the screening, right? <laughs> <laughs> no. No, one only does something like that when one's 18 and stupid. And yes. going down. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, it was, yeah, because it is, it goes right down to Canada, absolutely. Yeah. So folks, um, uh, how, does, uh, how do the viewers uh, um, learn more about you, keep in touch, see what you're up to? Um, can you give us your social media, your websites, whatever uh, you'd care to plug? Uh, well, we don't have much of that set up. Um, we should get a website. Well, but, yeah, you, can we're... you can always find me and them because I can relay messages at uh, Instagram at Natalie Delishney. At Natalie Delishney. Perfect. Um, You'll be the go the go to uh, the go to yeah. gal, the PR Same person. With Facebook, just look me up, and I'm I'm on social media. Yeah, and I'm on Facebook, just Garth Twa. I yeah. don't think there's many Garth Twas out there, so. No. Uh, and on Instagram, he's Garth Dotwa. Yes. Yes. Garth yes. You, you set me up with with with. Because there was no Garth Twa, so you had to put the dot. In the middle. Yeah. Are you sure, Garth? I think, I think so. <laughs> Am I? Yeah. Yeah, he's pretty sure. He's pretty sure. Yeah. And Dave just doesn't believe in social media, so we'll just get messages to him. That's true. Yeah. Okay. Terrific. Terrific. Well, we have, have to move along here, but in, in closing, uh, uh, thank you so much. You know, in an era of you know, where law and order style acting is a thing and everything is just revealing information and as bland and informational as possible. Uh, uh, you guys have brought something very, very unique and, and, and just entertaining and vibrant. And uh, just we really, really enjoyed this one. So thank you so much for sharing with us. Thank, thank you. you so thank much. You. This was absolutely worth the wait. Thank you so much. <laughs>